going back to what you know why I'm doing what I'm doing, I kind of had to go against the system. I was like, screw the system, they're wrong. I played it at the highest level. I've been around the top players in Europe. This is what make these kids, these players special, and I'm gonna freaking develop these kids and teach them these things because it does work. And over time, I started to get a lot of people supporting me in what I was doing. But man, I had to go against, you know, the, the system in America. They'd say, don't go train with Eddie. Don't, that stuff doesn't work. It looked like a bunch of kids that are dribbling in a circus. Hi guys, Saul here back again and uh, got a sensational episode for you this week. Uh, it's Eddie Johnson. Eddie's a coach out in America. And uh, yeah, Glenn and I came out of this show really thinking, wow, this guy is on it. He's really is on it. Top guy, top coach. Uh, he's really got his head screwed on. And uh, this is part of the Next Gen Coaches series. It might be unfair to call him a Next Gen Coach. He's already a well-established coach in America, one of probably the top young coaches coming out there, doing some really interesting things there at the moment. Uh, you can check him out on his Instagram page, which we talk about. But so Eddie really focuses on ball mastery, 1v1. He's had to fight a lot of the conventional coaching wisdom out in America at the moment. Uh, but yeah, like I say, a real inspirational uh, uh, episode this one uh, talking about his journey and what he's trying to do and uh, yeah he's, he's a real interesting guy a uh, real good coaching philosophy and I know this one you're going to really really enjoy and don't forget there's still 20% off the coaching courses at My Personal Football Coach if you want to learn more about Ball Mastery 1v1 the level 1 and 2 um, they're, they're on the My Personal Football Coach website get 20% off now with the code MPFC Coach. that's MPFC Coach. 20% off those and also 20% off the virtual conference which is available to download with myself and some of the best player developers in world football but check out the link in the bio for more info with that uh, without further ado let's get into the show so welcome back to another show um joined uh, coaching family special joined by my good friend glenn hicks as always glenn how you doing very well mate and we have a very very special guest uh today it is eddie johnson eddie if you don't know uh played pro at the highest level and uh, now uh, one of the top coaches coaching out in america and seen him check out his Instagram pages. Uh, we've got some top, top uh, players on there. He's really stood out. Eddie, how you doing, mate? I'm doing good, Saul. How are you? Glenn, how are you? Thanks for having me. Very pleased to have you. Like, um, yeah, we do like a, a, like a thing on next-gen coaches, but obviously you're quite established already. We call you next-gen coach. You're one of the top coaches in America already, young coaches coming through. Um, just to give us a little bit of background, obviously people don't know you, just very briefly, just literally, just tell us a bit about your playing career. You've had a very successful playing career and, and now about your coaching career as well, just very briefly for us, Eddie. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, uh, I started my professional league career, uh, my professional career at 17 in uh, Major League Soccer uh, with FC Dallas. Uh, I was there for four years. I uh, had a uh, two-year spell at Sporting KC too as well, uh, and then I uh, got signed by Fulham uh, in 2008, uh, 2008 to 2011. And uh, you know that's what kind of put me in the position that I'm in right now as far as you know giving back to the grassroots uh, over here in America and what it takes to play at the highest level with my education over at Fulham so I was at Fulham from 2008 to 2011 uh, and then when I left Europe I came back to Major League Soccer to uh, Seattle for two years and then before I retired when I was diagnosed with a heart condition I was in DC for two years uh, but I played 10 years on the national team uh, I was able to play in one World Cup uh, the 2006 World Cup uh, and I was a part of the other two World Cup cycles, 2010 uh, uh, World Cup cycle and the 2014 World Cup uh, World Cup cycle. And then tell us about your 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 coaching career. So this is a coaching podcast. We're going to focus a lot on your your coaching now. How how did how did you get into the uh, how did the coaching come about? Uh, so I was I was diagnosed with a heart condition in 2015. Uh, that was my last uh, season uh, with DC United in Major League Soccer. Uh, when I was going through the whole uh, you know retire retirement uh, uh, aspect of it as far as trying to like find you know like what it what what I was passionate about you know what I wanted to do next and like how can I still be involved in the in the game uh, and give the game back uh, everything that it had given to me and uh, I was talking to my, my my mentor and I was like you know what I want to get into coaching you know and he told me he was like no disrespect and you all know this better than I do no disrespect to you and you know your your playing career, but uh, you know playing is a lot different than coaching. He's like, so try try training young kids first. He said because for me, uh, a, a great coach can take a, a, a average kid and make him good, and take a good kid and make him great. And so I just started, you know, in 2015. Family friend introduced me to these little kids in the in the Orlando community, and he said, hey, you know, go, go work with them. And uh, he just gave me a bunch of cones, didn't tell me how to train a kid, and he was like, you know what, just go. 
just go do some of the things that, you know, you learn from some of the previous coaches that, uh, you know, that uh, you work with, you know, and, uh, you know, I really uh, fell in love with it. And, uh, you know, I did a whole year of just like going around America and just kind of seeing what the, uh, you know, the academies were doing. And, uh, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me and, and I was trying to go back to when I was like, you know, 10, 11 years old. And I just saw that like the kids uh, from a technical standpoint was just so much far behind than what I was seeing when I was over at Fulham, when I used to watch the younger academy kids when they were training in between breaks when we were training the first team. And so I was like, man, like I was like, I don't remember being, you know, my first touch being this bad. I don't remember sessions being, you know, not as good as they are right now. And uh, I was like, you know what, you know, maybe this is my calling, you know, maybe this is why I'm still here. You know, how can I give back all of my knowledge, you know, to the, to the younger generation? Because if we want to get, if we want soccer to improve in America, it's going to take more, uh, you know, players that have played at the highest level, you know, working with the younger generation. And that's something that you all do a very good job over in Europe. Yeah. So, I mean, because obviously now the modern day, modern day world, obviously Instagram's a big thing. And that's obviously where I first came across your work. And what obviously stands out, talk about this a lot, is that, you know, there's a lot of people who have big followings. But obviously, you know, Instagram's now almost like a walk-in portfolio or CV, if you like, or it tells a lot about your coaching methodology, even though we don't necessarily see you so much on that. But we see the players you work with, and it's quite extraordinary, actually, the, 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 the outcomes or the, the ability of these players on your, on your page in terms of their quick feet and explosiveness with the ball and things like that. So it really obviously chimes with uh, mine and Glenn's methodology, obviously. Tell us a bit about that then. Tell us about your coaching methodology itself. How did you, you know, it's one thing to want to improve players. It's another thing to have an idea of how to do it. You know, like you say, coaching is different to playing. How did you come up about this? Because obviously, you know, there's a... You obviously know what you're doing because you can see like you know all these players coming out and being so quality on the ball tell us a bit about that journey you went on yourself um one of the things that you know just being a former player myself or just you know i, I go back and just you know coming through the federation in, in in america you know i played at the u17 level played at the u20 i uh, played with the u20 uh the, the u23s the olympic uh team and i played on a senior team and, and one of the things uh, you know, just from playing at the international level and playing in Europe, I saw uh, that we lacked over here in this country is creativity or they don't give us the freedom or they don't allow us to be expressive at a young age. You know, whereas, you know, you look at, you know, the English, you look at the Italians, you look at the, the French, you look at the Germans, the South Americans, you know, every year, every generation, they always develop a player that's special, you know, and, and in America, you know, that's something, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not afraid to say it. It's something that we lack. And the reason why we lack it, it goes down to, you know, at, at the grassroots level, everything's based about winning and not developing. Uh, so when I came back and, and, and I said, you know what, I want to, you know, get involved in your younger generation and what needs to be changed just from seeing what I was seeing. I was like, the one thing I see right now is coaches are already teaching kids at U, U7, U8 how to be systematic, you know, and, and they're limit, you know, li putting limitations on, on as to what they can and can't do. Uh, and, and, and for me, that the only way to develop, you know, confident players is, is teaching them how to master the ball. And that's just my overall experience of playing at the highest level and seeing what, you know, why, you know, like I said, the top players in the world or the top, you know, players that play for the biggest clubs in the world, what made them special. And it's their, it's their ability on the ball, you know, and so, what made me came up with my uh, my philosophy was is that you know what we have a saying that is called uh, you know you know soccer has no age you know if you're good enough you're, you're old enough and, and 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 I got that from like playing I'll never forget playing uh, with Cardiff City against uh, Arsenal and I remember it was in a Carling Cup game and Arsenal had like all their academy players on the field and you know Cardiff City I was there Dave Jones was the manager and. Uh, you know, it was our our first team, and it was a bunch of senior players, and we we're playing all of these academy players, and they were just like popping the ball around us, and we couldn't get the ball, and we were chasing, and they were so skilled, how they hide the ball, and uh, the only way I knew to be able to develop those caliber players is more time on the ball, you know. So I figured that if I can get these kids at a younger age, uh, give them more time on the ball, you know, teach them how to master the ball, teach them all of these, you know, ball um, uh, manipulations on you know, how to escape pressure, how to unbalance players, uh, then we can develop more uh, confident players on the ball. And we all know what the more confidence on the ball, the better decision, the, the more composure you're going to have on the ball uh, to, to, to problem solve, you know. And uh, 
you know, that's what kind of made me get back into the, you know, uh, the, the grassroots uh, with the kids and, you know, mold mm. them young. And the only way I knew I was going to be able to do that is by homeschooling the kids. And that's what we have here is a homeschool because soccer in this country, you can only train for an hour and a half a day. And so what happens is these kids are going to school from like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then they're rushing to, to get to the training field and they only got like an hour and a half to train and they're only training three days a week. And the first 30 minutes of a training session is like a warm up. It's everything without the ball. There's no technical work. And then they're going into, you know, uh, you know, uh, tactical functional stuff without even, you know, progressing in, in, into the tactical functional stuff or teaching them how to uh, uh, the, the skill sets that they're going to need to be able to problem solve. And so when I saw that, I was like, man, if we can change our philosophy uh, between six and ten or six and 12, where winning is important and then just focus on development, we'll start to develop, uh, you know, better players in this country. And so I started with a little group. And then with that little group, those kids were kind of like my uh, testament to what I was doing. Uh, and, uh, you know, here I am today, you know, with, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a big movement in America where, where now I see in the last 10 years since I've been doing this, a lot of former players now are retiring now in America and they're opening up in academies and they're kind of following, you know, you know, my, my, my program. Interesting. I mean, just uh, get in a second, Blake. Just, just tell us about the, your home school then, Eddie, there. I mean, you mentioned it there. Tell us about that. How does that work? How many players have you got in it? You talked about the idea is to get more contact with the ball, right? Right. So so, uh, so the whole school, home school program, uh, it's, uh, it's called Student Achievement Program. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I was mentoring one of the kids, working with one of the, you know, local boys. And his mom has a doctor, doctorate degree. And so what I was telling her is, you know, I got a couple of homeschool kids right now. Uh, you know, they're, 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 it's called Florida Virtual, but you know, they're, 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 they're homeschooling at home because their parents are stay at home moms. But if we can really get like a school, uh, because a buddy of mine, he has a program in Dallas, you know, uh, uh, called Alpha Forms. I said, if we can get a real school, right, and get real teachers in here, and if we can, you know, you know, make sure we focus on education because education is important to as well and, and, and teach them the most important subjects, which is like math, language, arts, uh, and a foreign language. I was like, if we can, you know, get some qualified teachers in here and convince the parents to homeschool their kids, they're going to start seeing more results because we can really focus on development and, and, and not winning at a young age. And so, you know, she has a doctorate degree. She worked at a, a, a university and uh, the facility uh, that we have here in Orlando. Uh, she was able to work something out with the, the owners here. And, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, we have 60 kids here, we have 60 wow. kids here. Uh, and they, they all range from, uh, you know, eight to, uh, eight, eight to eighth grade, uh, eight years old to eighth grade. And, um, you know, yeah, they go to school from 830 to 1130. Uh, and then, you know, from 1130 to 1230, they eat lunch and from uh, one o'clock to, you know, five o'clock they train. And then the, the training and is consist on, you know, in all elements of the game, you know, you know, you know uh, positional specific technical work, you know, uh, you know, sc scanning and receiving movement off the ball, f finishing to goal, a lot of 1v1s, you know, a lot of, you know, 2v1s, 3v2s, uh, 1v2 attacking, you know, one player, you know, you know, attacking two defenders. So, you know, a lot of situational work, but but the mo main focus is, you know, the, the, the foundational work, you know, you know, you know, making them confident on the ball, uh, you know, teaching them the importance of their first touch and their body orientation and scanning the field. Uh, you know, you know, you know, instilling in them all of the attributes, which is going to make, you know, them on the field, their decision making a lot easier uh, as to far as when they're, you know, in, in a real game situation, you know, their, their trajectory and how their brain cognitively thinks is going to be a lot, you know, more better than the kids here uh, in America that are only training uh, uh, three days a week. Yeah, very interesting. Glenn, you want to come in here? Yeah, that was fascinating to listen to, as you know, so... Um... With my personal football coaching, uh, coaching stuff, with the mentoring, I've mentored a few young people in America, and I've had to learn a lot myself as well, Eddie. Uh, first of all, congrats on a fantastic career, by the way. But it's really insightful there for myself. I've never been to America to actually coach. I, I, I was, I've done a couple of little projects, but not, not extensively. But what I would say, some of the key words that you've said that I'm going to pounce on is creativity. And you said about the constraints of going too structured too early. You know, we still see that here in academy football, to be honest with you. As much as there's some incredible work going on, the more constraints that you put on the children early with in terms of like strategic strategies and systems, it's like what system can you play when you're playing five-a-side, six-a-side football? Do you know what I mean? There's got to be some 
yeah and, and it's interesting you talk about the creativity and you seem like you've got a real passion for wanting to ignite that um and the whole winning versus development thing is just it's a disease in youth football i think that it's just the adults need to kind of get over that don't we we need to have a, a culture of coaches like yourself and some of the best youth, youth developers need to share that and it needs to just come away from the winning and the shouting and the win at all costs and it really is a, a massive constraint on kids development and it's good to hear that there's a lot of good work going on because i'll be honest the feedback that i've had from some of the mentees is they're saying the same as you eddie there's a bit of a there is a bit of a, a, a short shortcoming or a skills gap in terms of the stuff that you're doing and passionate about the the ball mastery stuff that we always talk about the 1v1 domination in different ways becoming a pressure proof footballer you know like you said being able to escape pressure right. and you know whether it's and there are some fantastic examples you know Landon Donovan was a good player that you would have played with and right, you know P P Pulisic is a magic number 10 but absolutely. it's like what anyone would say when you've got a country with participation levels as high why are there not more why is there not an abundance of them and absolutely. there could be do you know what I mean so absolutely. yeah congrats on the work that you're doing and it's really insightful to, to actually hear what it's like at grassroots level and how difficult it is to the challenges you face in terms of like developing developing that culture so yeah I mean, let's come back to your um, methodology, Eddie, because I think it's interesting as well, because I think it's the same here when, I think, if I'm not mistaken, US soccer has gone down a similar route to the English Football Association in terms of this very game-based model in terms of the coach education system where maybe it's not, individual ball work is not encouraged as much as playing everything in a formal game. Is that, is that right? Would that be a right assumption yeah, to it's say? A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a play, practice, play uh, format. Right. Um, and um, uh, like, like, like I was saying earlier, um, you know, the emphasis uh, is on winning, you know, and, and, and like you said, uh, like Glenn was saying, you know, going too structural too soon. Uh, and, and, and what you're saying is uh, like, like, for example, you know, my, you know, I take the kids and, and, and we travel around the, the country and we play against MLS academies. We play against all of these top programs and like, you know, it, it, you know, we play out of the back. You know, I put them in real situations now that are gonna uncomfortable, make them uncomfortable now to make them comfortable later. And you know, sometimes those uncomfortable situations can result to you know us getting scored on. You know, which for me it doesn't matter right now. You know, because in in order to make them comfortable in those situations, you gotta allow them to try. You know, you can't spend four hours on the training pitch working on these things and then say, you know, when you're being pressed in front of your goal, hey, just clear it. You know, so. Um, like I said, you know, so my philosophy was was development over winning, uh, and and if I can, you know, uh, if I can develop all of these skill sets and these these attributes into these kids, what's going to help them be able to problem solve, you know, uh, you know, better than the average kid later on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be more prone at putting my kids in a position to succeed in any type of system that they go into later because I'm not making them systematic too soon where it goes back to what Glenn was saying, you know, they're making, you know, you know, the, the game at a young age too structural and limiting the kids onto what they can and can't do. So I'm more about creativity, freedom, take risks. Uh, and that's why you see a lot of the, the, the things that we focus on is ball mastery uh, and, 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 you know, doing, you know, those, those reps after reps. So it becomes, you know, uh, second nature when they're on the field, they can do it without thinking, you know, and, you know, when I started doing it, I started getting a lot of backlash, you know, because I was going against the system like anybody else that goes against what the system says not to do. Uh, you know, but I'm looking at in America, a lot of these teams that are winning because they got the bigger, faster, stronger players. But, you know, you take away, uh, we have a saying, you, you, you know, what's a Ferrari without gas? You know, it's nothing. You know, it, 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 it looks fast, but, you know, if we're, if, we're, if we're moving the ball about and we're circulating the ball and they're pressing with their fast, big, strong kid, before you know it, we're going to end up, you know, tiring that, that striker out. And then now start pulling players out of position and then spaces open up for players to get in pockets. And now we can break down their, their, their lines of press. And so we focus on, you know, putting the kids in real situations, no matter the outcome. And uh, I knew the only way I was going to be able to, you know, preach what, what I was doing, you know, because in the beginning, I'm not going to be honest. So it was all more trial and tribulation. You know, I found these young, motivated kids that love soccer. And I say, you know what, I'm just going to, do a bunch of foundational work. I'm gonna make them as technical as I can. You know, I'm gonna make sure their left foot is like their their their, their dominant foot is like their non-dominant foot, and I'm gonna teach them all the attributes on how to, you know, you know, you know, ball mastery. They they mistake it for just the ball being on the ground, but ball mastery is being able to get the ball out of the air air too as well. Your arrow control and how you get it off the chest and how you take it off the thigh and how you bring it down off your. And I said, if I can, 
if I can develop all of these attributes now, whenever, uh, and then teach them when and where and how to use these things, whenever they go into any type of system, they're going to be more prone at being outshining whatever their competition is because the other kids aren't being taught these things. And what happens is when people go too structural too soon, then now you're confusing the kid because a kid can play in a system, and we all know this, say an Arsenal uh, Academy. You can put a kid in a system like that, possession-oriented, one and two touch, pass and move, inner exchange. But then now they go play for a coach where the coach be like, you know what, we want you to have more freedom. We want you to take players on and stuff. But if a kid's been in a system where they can only do one and two touch at a young age and you made them too systematic, then now it, 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 it restricts their creativity because they've never been in a position to put them in those situations to be creative, you know? And so... Um, that's what I see a lot here in America, and I feel like it's not doing the kids any uh, it's not doing any of the kids a service because then now you're making them go too structural too soon or, or just the long ball. They play a lot of long ball here at the young age because everything's so based on winning. You know, coaches, like I said, the coaches ego are more important than developing the individuals, whereas I'm doing the complete opposite. I've played the game at a high highest level. Going to Europe was one of the biggest educations for me ever as far as learning the game and understanding the game and looking what the caliber players should look like and what the coaching should look like. All I did was just brought back all of those experiences and, and you know, everything I learned from the great managers that I, that I, that I worked with. Uh, and I'm just instilling into these young kids, you know, and like, you know, every kid learns different than, you know, every kid, you know, but I knew in order for to, to, to bring the light what it is that I was doing, it was going to take a lot of time and patience, you know, and we all know as former players, you know, if you have a belief in something and you put your head down and you work towards it, you know, in due time, you're going to make whatever it is that you're working towards come to light. And that's kind of what it was. But I knew I had to have some committed parents that believed in what I was doing to back me in order to put myself in the position that I'm in. Tell us about then, again, go back to your, your coaching philosophy methodology. Tell us what, what's a typical session look like for the players then when they come? All right. So, yeah, so they come and, uh, you know, uh, the, the first, the first uh, you know, again, I don't really time the how long they're doing it. I'm more go as like, you know, rhythm, you know. So, like, we'll, we'll, the kids will come and then they all get a ball. We'll just start doing keep ups. We'll do some keep ups. Uh, just, you know, working on some aerial control uh, and stuff. And then, you know, the keep-ups, we can progress the keep-ups to, like, different parts of, you know, the foot that you're using to keep the ball up. Uh, and then, you know, uh, you know, different parts of the foot to keep the ball up and then maybe kick it high, get it down, and then now go into the ground where they're doing aerial and then getting it down and then now doing some skills and being creative, not telling them what skills to use. Uh, a lot of the stuff I don't post, I keep it to myself. I only post some of the stuff just to kind of give you a taste. But a lot of the stuff we do, I just keep it to myself. I don't show everyone. But the, the but the keep ups can progress from you know aerial control to getting it down to doing different variety of skills, and we'll do that for about you know 30, 30 minutes, and then we'll go into like some rondos. We'll put them in like you know uh, s small groups of three v one rondos, you know four v one rondos. Uh, never really go into any bigger rondos because I, I want them more moving and I feel like the bigger the rondos you get, the less moving they are in the, in the warm up, you know, and like what I try and do is by doing the rondos is, uh, you know, activating the, br the brain uh, because the rondos consist of decision making. So we all know that's the most important muscle in the body. Uh, so then we'll do that. Uh, for about a, another 30 minutes and then, uh, you know, then I'll have them, you know, we'll, we'll break up and then I'll set up these different types of stations and all these different stations will be all of these type of dribbling techniques and, you know, you know, working on different, you know, skills and different, you know, ball manipulations or how to protect the ball, uh, you know, different change of directions and stuff. And so we'll do that for a bit and then we'll start, we'll go from that and then we'll go to all of these different variety of passing uh, patterns. Uh, and so if the focus is on, Okay, we're gonna work on two v ones today, you know. So I'll divine, you know, I'll I'll design some passing patterns where we're working on, you know, you know, you know, you know, the two breaking down the one, or if it's, you know, the three breaking down two. Uh, so some more like, uh, you know, decision making where it consists of individual ability, and then now, you know, thinking for each other and you know, using your supporting players that are around you, uh, and then you know, uh, going into like mini games, you know, going into mini games, and then uh, you know, seeing, you know, you know, you know, from an individual standpoint. You know, you know how how are they, how how expressive they are on the ball. You know, and uh, you know, you know, um, you know, 
and 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 how their trajectory is working and how they use you know their use of the players that are around them. You know, I never go into anything bigger than uh, like six v six. We keep it uh you know small sided uh, and, and in tight spaces because for me. Uh, the, the the small side of games, the, the less time they have on the ball, the, the, the quicker their trajectory is thinking. Uh, the bigger the space, the more time, you know, they're not thinking fast enough. And so for me, it's all about, uh, you know, tempo. It's all about quick decision making. And so the smaller formats is something that we focus on a lot. And we try and put them in the situations, you know, where they don't have, you know, a lot of space. So we can see them implementing their ball mastery and, and their skill sets and their ability to still be able to break down a block of, you know, two, a block of three or a block of four in, in that small uh, uh, setting, you know. So it's a lot of, you know, repetitions. I'm working on uh, uh, individual attributes and, uh, you know, putting them in real situation situations uh, in, in, a, in, in small formats and, and uh, you know, encouraging them to work on the things that it is that we were working on prior, uh, you know, warming up, you know, uh, in, in, in the beginning of the session. I, some of the stuff I see, um, some of the players work in terms of really interesting and exciting ball work you're doing with like the change of speed to tempo going slow to go quick exploding out you know change of speed and stuff like that where'd you get the ideas for that where'd you, where'd you get the inspiration for those those uh those practices i just think for play from 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 the players that i, I played against when i was in europe or played at the international level you know i look at the best players in the world and i say you know what what makes what makes a ronaldo different you know what makes a uh 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 a, a soccer, uh, what makes a, a, a Pulisic, what makes a, a De Bruyne, you know, you look at all the best players in the world and the positions that they play and you study those players or even my own experience of being on the field in my day with some of the top players and you say, what makes a good nine, what makes a good seven, what makes a good six, what makes a good eight, et cetera, et cetera. And then you look at their qualities and their abilities and then you say, okay, uh, and this is something, you know, as crazy as it sounds, I remember growing up in America, and I don't want to get off topic a little bit. When we try and when we try and replicate a skill or, or, or mimic a skill that, like maybe an English player did, or like a, a French or a German player, our coaches would tell us, "You're not English, you're not French. Don't do that. They can do that." You know, like like seriously, I'm not. I'm not, like. I remember even in in my senior team, I don't want to say the coaches that I played for on the national team, but they'll say, "Don't do that." You know, and so it's like if you're telling a kid. So if a kid in America is looking up to like a, 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 a Harry Kane and, and, and he wants to try and do a skill that Harry Kane uh, has done on, on the telly and, and you're telling him don't do it, but he's looking at Harry Kane and Harry Kane's doing it at the highest level, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like you're restricting them to, as far as to what they can and can't do because it goes back to the whole system is designed to win at a young age and not develop, develop you know, and so... Going back to what, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing, I kind of had to go against the system. I was like, screw the system. They're wrong. I played at the highest level. I've been around the top players in Europe. This is what makes these kids, these players special. And I'm going to freaking develop these kids and teach them these things because it does work. And over time, I started to get a lot of people supporting me in what I was doing. But, man, I had to go against you know, the system in America, they say, don't go train with Eddie. Don't, that stuff doesn't work. It looked like a bunch of kids that are dribbling in a circus. You know, you hear all of these crazy things. And I'm like, you know, but now I look 10 years later, man, I'm not going to lie, Saul, everybody's doing it now in America. Like they, like everyone's doing it. They're all opening up home schools. They're all talking about ball mastery. They say, they used to say the cone drills don't work. They're all doing it. They're all copying it, you know, because they're seeing the benefits of, 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 of the, of, of how it works for the kids, uh, but like you said, it, it's it's a constant battle because the focus in America is on winning. So parents want to be on winning teams. They don't care how the soccer's played as long as they're spending their money and the team's winning. That's what matters. So what I tell my parents is, is I try and educate them is we want to win later. We don't want to win now, you know. And if we put these kids in a situation and and, and from a foundational standpoint, make sure the foundation's right. They're going to be able to go into any system tactically and be able to play because they're going to know how to problem solve. And it goes back to what Austin Binger said, you know, soccer is a technical sport. It's like the vocabulary in the classroom. The better your vocabulary is, the more you can express yourself in different ways. And that's literally what I've been doing since I started doing this to say, you know what? I played. I can deal with them talking smack about me. You know, I can deal with it. And so what 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 was hard for me is instilling my mentality into my kids at a young age and saying, don't listen to these people. 
you know, they're wrong. Trust me, this is going to work, you know. And, and uh, man, you know, with the grace of God, I've been able to freaking, you know, be real. I've been real consistent with it. Uh, and, and, and you see more and more, like, more and more coaches are doing it now and a lot of more kids are benefit from it. And I put it out there for free. I don't sell it or anything. You know, the content's there, you know, because I know it's going to take a village. It's going to take more than me. I've had formal, I've had former players, teammates that I play with now, you know, reaching out to me, opening up, you know, you know, facilities and doing the, the exact same thing because they see how much it's benefiting the youth in this country. Yeah, but fantastic. To overall, answer your question, Saul, I, yeah. I got my philosophy for, from from seeing like why does England develop great players all the time why does France why does Germany why does Brazil why and you look at the way those players they're, they're how they you know how they play on the field how they move on the field you know how they see the game why are we teaching that in America you know no no disrespect to to me no disrespect to Landon Donovan no disrespect to Clint Dempsey no you know no disrespect but we're telling our kids to be like us that's not enough. I, I, and I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, why aren't we teaching our kids how to be like the ball and door winner, winners? Why are we selling ourselves short? Why isn't that not capable? It is capable if you do right by the kids. If you take the emphasis off winning at a young age in development, right, you'll, you'll, you'll make your money on the back end. You may not get it right now, but, it, but it's trial and error. You got to take risks, just like they took a risk of bringing Eddie Johnson over to Fulham at 22. They spend $6 million uh, dollars for me to come over, three million pounds. It didn't work, but they took the risk. They saw something in me. It didn't work for whatever reason. It didn't work, you know. But you got to take the risk. And what we're doing is we're not risking. We're not investing enough in, in the younger generation right now. And if we are investing, the academies, the MLS here, they're taking kids at like they're taking kids at ten years old and they're making a twenty-three man roster. And what they're doing is they're isolating these kids and they're stopping these kids to have access on what they can and can't do at a young age. You know, like we do a lot of futsal too, Saul and Glenn. We do a lot of futsal. You know, the more touches on the ball, the, the, you know, the, the, the more this stuff makes sense, the more situations you put these kids in, the more creativity you give them, the more freedom. You know, these kids start to see things inside them they never knew exist. They see that these skills work because you actually let them try. You know, but we put fear in our kids at a young age and we stop them from doing things at a young age. And so, you know, when you see... I think Glenn said, you know, you see a Landon Donovan and then you see a Pulisic and then you're saying why, you know, in, in the generation of soccer, why it's only like two players or Dempsey or like three players in a generation of soccer has been special. It's because, of, you know, it's because of the culture in soccer here. It's, it's, it's a winning, it's a winning over development uh, culture, you know, and if, and, if, and if you're not winning, you know, no one wants to be in those programs, you know, and so these academies are taking these kids over here right now. It drives me freaking crazy. At like at, at nine, ten years old, and they're telling them they can't do anything outside of the academy. But then they're playing games, Glenn, uh, Saul and Glenn, on the weekend where they're beating clubs 15-0, 16-0. Like, what are those kids getting out of that? They're taking the best kids, and then now the club system is so diluted. Now the competition's not good because they're taking all the best players and they put them there. And then, like, who are they gonna play? It's not like over in Europe, like they're playing. Like, like, like I tell them. Soccer will never get to where it needs to be because Arsenal, Chelsea, Man U, like all of those top academies, those kids are playing each other every like week in and week out. We don't get those competition of games. The academies are taking all the good players here. And like in Florida, you only have, and we talk about the distance, right? It's, it's such a big country. Florida has two MLS Pro Academies, Inter-Miami and Orlando City. So the only time they get a good game is when they play each other. Other than that, they're fucking killing every team. Sorry for my length. They're killing every team 16-0. And, and then these kids are posting stuff and parents like, we want to, what are you learning out of that? Yeah. You're not getting nothing out of that. You know? So I must say, I am, I'm riveted, honestly. I know it so much, but I've really enjoyed listening. Your passion, Eddie, is, oh, it's man, I, admirable, mate. Honestly, we can hear it coming out, the fuel and the fire. And, and we can almost hear your frustrations you've been through because myself and so it's not always been a straightforward journey here in England, either, you know, it's only probably the last 15, 20 years that academies have actually really started coaching in a progressive way and we've seen the Fodens and all this of this. And we are really getting a generation of serious talents come through. But we can, I can hear your frustrations. I can hear your commitment and your passion. And it sounds like you've hopefully got to a tipping point after doing it for nine to ten years. Right, and right. You're, seeing the fruit, you're seeing the fruits of your labour with young children coming through. But 
there's some really key points you've made there. And in terms of the landscape of American soccer compared to English association football is I think I think the whole parents paying puts a bit more extra pressure on the leaders of the group, whoever runs these franchises or, or, or football clubs and stuff, because they're paying customers, which is unfortunate for young children. And I say that in a sense of like, it puts this false pressure like you must produce. So if the parents are uneducated and they're looking just at the win and the loss and they just keep going home, I know that's a big thing in American sport. They've got the W, they've got the L. And it just puts a bit of pressure because there's finances involved and I think it's it takes it away from the development. That's one aspect. But the competition thing you said there is incredibly important. So myself and Saul, you know, you know, Saul's worked at Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs. I've worked at Spurs the last 15 years. And these young kids you're seeing come through now. So the young Ethan Winery, youngest player ever for Arsenal, scored the other day. But people that are in the academy system have seen this young man doing this since he was six, seven, eight years old. And, you know, someone the same age as him, Mikey Moore, is the youngest player ever at Tottenham Hotspur. So you've got in the same year the youngest players at the North London clubs in the history, in 150-year histories of the football clubs. It's quite remarkable. But what that does tell you is, like what you said there, 15-0 is no good for anyone. These kids have been pushing each other. as they've, So, yes, they've had the commitment. Yes, they've had exceptional coaching there are fantastic coaches at the clubs in England right now and you know some of the academies get a bashing over the head for the lack of success no but there's incredible success going on but the biggest thing they have had is that competitive element these boys are pushing each other these the level of competition is fierce throughout English academies European academies and it's something that clearly American soccer has got to be careful of in in terms of children to get to the next level will then have to leave America and it will be a desperation to get to Europe. Like yourself, you was incredibly fortunate. And I know you say it isn't a success, but getting yourself to the Premier League, Eddie, is an incredible yeah, achievement. And sure. do you know what I mean? But but that's that will become the only route. And that's a danger for, for, for American soccer as well. Like, can you get to Europe or can you get to the, the maybe the South American leagues or, or I don't know, wherever it is, somewhere where the talent can flourish because of both the coaching and the competitive levels but you make so many really valid points and it's really insightful to, to to hear what's going what's going on there eddie i'm just gonna ask you what i mean are you doing you're doing your your coaching licenses in america you're doing you're doing your like a license and stuff right so so like so I, I haven't done the i haven't done the license yet i'm in the process of setting that all up right now yeah have you how have, how have people obviously you're a very well known person you're a big brand now you're what you're doing your 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 reputation procedure i'm interested when you go to these things how do people, how do they, you let the the educators, the coach educators respond to you, or they, do they challenge you? They say, you know, because obviously, you know, maybe your philosophy is slightly different to what they're promoting, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I used to in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning when I first started, you know, I was just training kids. You know, I wasn't really like, you know, trying to make it as big as it it, it, it has uh, became. You know, and and you know that's. You know, it's like any anybody. You know, I was putting my head down. You know, and I was more like, I'm, I'm not. I, I, I'm gonna prove them wrong. That you know, this is how kids should be training. So it just in the beginning it was just more just training kids. I, I didn't, I didn't want to make it this big, man. It was just more like I'm still trying to find my way, trying to see what you know path I wanted to go down. But I knew I wanted to still be involved in the, in in the game. You know, and then I, it's like anything when you when you start training kids, you start it, you start growing a love for it, and you start you know after training kids, you start wanting to coach some teams and stuff. You know, so you know I've been so busy with just trying to build this and kind of just like focus on myself uh, because I was in a space where you know what I don't want to have to listen to anybody. I played professionally for 15 years. I'm just gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna take all my you know my real experiences, good and bad. Uh, take some of my 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 coaching uh, methods from all the uh, coaches that I played for, and kind of just put it all together and make it my own thing, you know. And and that's what I was kind of just doing, you know. But you know, I am hungry now to want to coach, you know. So like now, you know, coaching license and stuff is something I'm starting to uh, consider. Uh, but I haven't taken my coaching license. All of this stuff has just been really just like. You know, well, I mean, it, when you when you run you've got a successful business, it's uh, it's a pretty hectic, uh, oh, pretty hectic me. endeavor, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Trust me, I know, I know. You know, but, but you I can hear wanted, it's. I never wanted to get this big though, but it, yeah. but it happened, you know. Yeah. So I'm at that problem right now, but 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 one of the reasons why I'm doing this, honestly, honestly, is not just because I I want to see soccer grow in this country, and I know the kids are so much more deserving. It's the things that weren't taught to me when I went over to Europe 
which made it hard for me to survive over there. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now, because I feel like I feel like with the right preparation, because I had the ability to, 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 to do well in Europe uh, with the right with the right environment at a young age, if my foundation was a lot better, you know, like scanning and all of that stuff and moving off the like none of that stuff was like being none of that stuff was taught to us growing up, you know, and so, you know, because I failed, I had a I made a promise to myself now, now that I see it, I know what these kids need. I know what it takes to, to succeed. And it's not just we know just uh, on the ball, you know, and how it's it's the mental aspect of it, too, dealing with the pressure of being over there, too, as well. You know, that's what's really, really has motivated me to, to like, you know, you know, really go go at this, you know. And, uh, you know, like you said, Saul, uh, at some point, they, you know, uh, credentials come into play. Uh, you know, and, and I got to do my, my, my coaching, uh, you know. Well, well I suppose it, it, it depends, doesn't it? I suppose if you want to, I mean, do you have aspirations, maybe work in, go to pro football, work in, in pro football or national football? I mean, yeah, is that that's something you'd like to do? I mean, so that's that's when you would need it, isn't it, really? That's yeah. when that, it's yeah. like the license, isn't it, literally? Yeah. Glenn, anything you want to come in, mate? Yeah, no, you, it just goes, because we've had a lot of conversations about qualifications and access to them and, in this country, it's, it's a big thing at the moment in terms of accessibility to courses and progressing up the ladder and this and that. But it sounds like, look, organically and authentically, you're you're a coach, you're a qualified coach in terms of your competency and stuff like that. And I think that's a message for everyone, and it's all not just for Eddie and people that have been at the top of the game as a footballer, but, you know, there's a, a lot of coaches at grassroots level that become a bit demoralised. And I imagine that haven't got your platform in America and England as well, where they're doing incredible stuff. There are fantastic grassroots coaches in this country where... The yeah, there's coaches great coaches. Country, some of the best coaches in this country don't have their their their, uh, their licenses. Absolutely, and we're here uh, uh, illegally. They're <laughs> 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 just coaching at youth, uh, uh, just a youth coach somewhere here. But it's some top coaches over here, man. Uh, or maybe they can't afford it financially. Uh, that are doing a great job and don't get the credit that they deserve. You know. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. And I, I think they're important points and they saw about getting your qualifications, but more important, like getting quality experience and getting out there on the grass. And and like you said, right near the beginning, you said trials and trials and tribulations. You're just going through, you know, you just got an idea. You, you, you're looking at the players at the top end of the game. What does that look like? How can we build that? And organically and authentically, you're trying to do that. And it's that, that's that's where the success seems to be coming from, because that kind of stuff is fueled by nothing other than your passion and love, like you sound like you just said there a minute ago, you, you've, you've developed a love for what you do. And I think it's a really important message for whether you're a grassroots coach, you know, balls, bibs and cones and doing everything yourself, washing the kit on a Sunday or you're fortunate enough to be in an academy. I think that is the biggest takeaway message I'm getting from this conversation with yourself, Eddie, is the fuel and the passion and the love for what you do is, in my opinion, because I know me and Saul are incredibly passionate and the best practitioners and player developers we have ever come across share that same skill that that like it's it's that's the biggest thing that's the driver that has got you through the hurdles and got you you know the resilience and whatever else and i think that's the thing that's going to help american soccer grow as well not just yourself but like you say whoever else is now doing that and who's lit the fire and and who's had the fire lit under him i think that's that's really really important that, that, that people hear the passion and um yeah once you get the qualifications because i would take an under you know someone with all the qualifications but a lack of the passion that you're showing and and the session design. I, I'm, I'm taking an underqualified but better quality human being and better quality coach all day of the week if it was me, you know, picking for jobs and whatever. Do you know what I mean? So right. I think it's an important message for a lot of grassroots coaches out there listening as well. Right. So, and, and just to, you know, just, uh, you know, you, 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 like, I can speak for myself and I'm pretty sure there's probably other uh, uh, coaches or trainers that follow you. Uh, you, uh, you inspire me. You know, you know what you're doing, what you're doing on your page. You, you motivate me. You, you, uh, you know, I, I, I learn from you. Um, you know how you're developing those. You know, the, the next generation and how you work with the pros. Uh, you do a fantastic job. And uh, you know, um, you know, it's people like you uh, that that make me a better version of myself too, as well. You know, right when I think I'm doing a good job over here, I can. I can look at your videos. I can look at what you're doing. And I'll be like, man, he's just he's he's so good. But you know, you know that's you know you inspire me to 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 to, to get to that level one day. Uh, I got a lot of work to do, uh, but it's it's people like you that are out there uh, motivating people like me to be the the the, 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 the version of 
uh, the best version of myself, you know, for the for the younger generation here in America too. So keep up the great work. Uh, oh, you thank know, you. England, That's uh, England, yeah, I appreciate England that. In the world, are, are are lucky to have someone like you that is, you know, so devoted, you know, to putting all your time and knowledge and expertise out there. Uh, that give you know trainers like myself and mentors like myself, you know, uh, uh, a platform where we can you know have somebody that we look up to to inspire us to motivate us to be a better version of ourselves. Wow, that's a uh, thank you. I really appreciate those those kind words. And, that's, and honestly, you you inspire me too, mate. I look at the work you do, the players, and I take a lot of inspiration from what you do. So I think it's good. It's like um, like a community now, isn't it? Like you know, of uh, people like yourself and Glenn and all these other guys out there who who are doing this sort of individual work and very much spontaneously as well. Maybe not, you know, take inspiration from federation courses, but we seem to be coming up with these these ideas right. ourselves. And like I say, I take a lot of uh, inspiration for you, though. I appreciate that for those kind words, mate. Uh, what, what's what was your, what's next for you then? What's your aspirations for the for the short term and the long term? So short short term for me right now, uh, I, I am really considering uh, uh, getting my license. Uh, uh, I have a former teammate, Anguchi Yanyeu. He's part of the federation right now uh, with U, U, U.S. soccer. And uh, one of my short-term goals is getting my license and long-term goal. Uh, you know, now that I got this kind of like consistently, consistently going and I brought in a guy now to help me, uh, I, I, I want to try and get a youth, a youth national team. Uh, get a youth national team, right. get, get involved in the federation. Uh, you know, and I know, what it, I know what it means to wear the badge. Uh, I, 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 I know what direction the country is trying to go in. Uh, you know, I got a sense of, you know, what what development looks like and should be like in this country and how players should be uh, developing in this country. Um, and I think it's a great time right now in America where, you know, uh, you know, soccer is getting better. Uh, we got some, you know, good youth national team players coming up through the system, uh, you know, like the little Sullivan. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, kid uh, that signed with Man City um, you know we got some good kids coming up and just you know being around those kids and just you know nurturing those kids and educating those kids of having you know you know you know the same experiences at their age and you know how to you know how to go up you know how to go about it from a you know a psychological standpoint and training standpoint and just kind of you know meant you know you know mentoring how I am right now but at a youth national team level you know, and putting these kids in a position where they can keep evolving and growing too and reaching their goals, you know, to one day become inspiring professional soccer players too. So that in the short term is probably getting my license, is getting my license and then, you know, making a call to U.S. soccer and saying, hey, uh, I'm ready right now, you know, you know, mentally, psychologically, I'm ready right now. I got an idea, you know, as to, you know, what it is that, you know, I want to do. And uh, this is what my philosophy is. And, uh, you know, uh, go give back the federation what they gave me. Interesting, very inspiring, and also there's, I mean, there's changes going on in U.S. soccer, right? You got the uh, Glenn Crocker, is it, from the Premier League in Southampton, yeah. uh, coming in, and obviously pushing the highest level. So yeah, look, maybe they're ready for the winter changes here, and ready for Eddie to come in and help them with uh, the next gen. Listen, Eddie, thanks very much, mate. I know you're busy, and you got your school program there. It's been fantastic, really, like I say, inspirational, and great for you to share your journey and the great work. And look, just uh, tell everyone where they can check out your great work on Instagram, for example. No, I saw Glenn. Thanks, man. It's been amazing. Uh, yeah, just Eddie Johnson here. If you want to, you know, if you want some free content, you know, just follow me on my Instagram, uh, Eddie, uh, E-double-D-I-E underscore Johnson7. Uh, feel free to reach out to me via DM. I always check my DM too as well. I like to engage uh, with the with with the world. Amazing. Eddie, thanks very much, mate. Glenn, cheers, pal. Cheers, See mate. you soon. Thank you, mate.